All right. Good morning, and thank you for coming. It's, uh, we're going to talk about the state of the school today, and we're going to talk about the last year, and it has been a marvelous year in many respects. So thank you very much. The faculty, the staff, and the students have all pulled together to make this, uh, this year a really a banner year. There's one little, uh, little vignette that kind of captures it for me. Um, a couple of years ago, I graduated a brilliant graduate student through the biochemistry program. And uh, he worked for me, obviously, as a graduate advisor. And then he went to the Dana-Farber, and he worked for an MD, PhD there. And then about a year ago, he called me up and he said, you know, I've seen the connection between my work in the lab and the clinics, you know, in both your lab and in my postdoc lab. And I know it's hard and I know it's challenging, but I want to be a part of taking my work into patients. And I'm applying to medical school. And Zhu Guang Chen is in our first year class. And on White Coat Sunday, he came up to me and said, this is the happiest day of my life. So, so this is what it's all about, taking brilliant young people and bringing them forward uh, to do great things. I'm sure he's going to do great things. Well, the, well, the biggest news uh, for this year is the opportunity, several years ahead of what we thought, to build a new medical education building. And without the efforts of the faculty and the students and the staff who are participating, on our 13 different committees in planning this building, we would not be as far ahead as we are. We've had multiple meetings since July, and the program architects are due in, an, in another week or two to deliver a, a pro, the uh, documents based on, uh, on your feedback. This is going to allow us to have to think in a new and soaring way about medical education. I mean, the building will wrap the skin around an extraordinary curriculum, but now that we have the space and the connectivity between the CCLCM and the university program, we can liberate ourselves to think about futuristic approaches to medical education, including interprofessional education, including what kind of resources we want to have to deliver the very best med medical education, we can build on the success of the urban health pathway and the university program and, de and uh, develop other pathways as well. And the ones that we're thinking about are world medicine, medical humanities, and something to do with the business of medicine. I don't like the title, so maybe we should do a crowdsourcing of what we should call a program like this. Yeah. Um, the world medicine is a particularly appealing uh, idea because we now have, uh, we've now been rated, our global health program has been rated number one in the United States. And uh, uh, the map there shows uh, some of the places that, uh, that we have programs. Uh, we have a 48,000 patient study in China. We have a 25 year commitment in uh, Uganda. Uh, we have a new uh, program in Papua New Guinea training master's students in epidemiology. We have some remarkable global health programs, and these are complementary to the programs at the Cleveland Clinic. The hospital in Abu Dhabi, Jim Young tells me, draws patients from a thousand mile radius, and I suppose one should not exult about sickness, but our students would have an incredible opportunity to view pathology from that area of the world uh, through the uh, Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi. Uh, we also have the opportunity in this new building to celebrate both our heritage and the humanistic part of medicine. Some, uh, some of you may recognize the middle picture there as Gallery One from the Art Museum. What if we put that in or something like it and talked about the heritage of medicine in Cleveland and gave the students what we hope will be both roots and wings, rooted in their rich heritage and the wings of very futuristic uh, medicine. This is going to be a fabulous program. The design and construction are, are operating on warp speed schedule. Um, we have been challenged by the president to uh, enroll the class that enters in 2016. 
uh, in that building. And uh, anybody who has thought about futuristic buildings combining programs and uh, construction knows that that is a schedule that is very challenging. But we are determined to uh, move forward as quickly as possible. The final space programming documents are due on, uh, on October 11th. I've been to London along with uh, Dr. Jamie Stoller from the Cleveland Clinic uh, Learner College. Uh, to work with the architects, Foster and Partners, that have been hired for this project. They are extremely exciting architects. They are amazing with building-to-building -building interactions, space, and glass, light, and open spaces. And believe me, in Cleveland, we could use all the light we can get. <laughs> so. That is, that is one of the really exciting things that have happened this year. But I want to talk about some of our other, uh, our other achievements this year. Talk about our research and our finances and faculty development community, and then return to uh, some of our education programs. Now, this has been a remarkable year for achievements. I hope it, we've passed out sheets with a lot of the awards that, uh, that have occurred this year. If you, we missed you, we apologize, and if we missed you, there are ways that you can tell us about you. First of all, Amanda Petrack, our marketing and communications uh, uh, chief, is right over there, a tall lady with blonde hair. Um, you can em uh, email her at amanda.petrack at kc.edu, or you can go on our website under achievements, and there's a space where you can tell us about it just going online. So please don't be insulted if we've missed you, and if we have, tell us about it. We would love to, um, we would love to uh, uh, acknowledge everyone. And I hope some of you came in early, saw some of those awards circulating on the screen before, uh, before we opened the, uh, the program. Now, my first uh, congratulations is really to our primary affiliate. We have been affiliated with Metro Health, the VA, the Cleveland Clinic, and University Hospitals for many years. And the Cleveland Clinic has consistently ranked on the honor roll of uh, uh, US hospitals. This year, for the first time, University Hospitals is on the honor roll. That makes us only one, one of only five cities in the country with more than one hospital on the honor roll, a top healthcare destination, and only three universities in the country have uh, affiliate, affiliations with more than one hospital on the honor roll. And we are in the company of Harvard and UCLA. UH did, uh, had 21 ranked specialties, 14 areas of improvement. This is a spectacular performance. Congratulations to all of you who improved on this and worked so hard to deliver excellent patient care. Congratulations to the Cleveland Clinic for maintaining its, ma its magnificent ranking. And aren't we lucky to have these opportunities to send our students to such excellent programs uh, in, the, in this, uh, this city? This is a truly spectacular uh, opportunity. Now, we had a good year in recruiting this year. Uh, Tony Winshaw Boris uh, came home. Uh, from his MD-PhD training with Richard Hansen and being peripatetic for a while. He's back as chair of genetics. Bob Kirsch rose to chair of the Department of Biomedical Engineering. Doug Ree started on September 1st as chair of ophthalmology and visual sciences. And Cliff McGarian started about a year ago as uh, chair of otolaryngology. We had two appointments in the administrative line. Now, Jim Chmiel, it was appointed uh, medical director and chief executive for the Ohio Clinical Trials Collaborative, the collaborative that goes from uh, uh, Cincinnati, Columbus, and Cleveland. We were down with the governor yesterday, and the governor was blown away by the progress that Jim has made in the first few months since he was appointed on May 1st. And he was so blown away that he offered to use his personal good offices to advance this program and connect us at his home with the uh, leaders of pharmaceutical companies and clinical research organizations. So congrats to Jim on a flying start. And congrats to Paul McDonald, uh, who was named Associate Dean for Graduate Education, who has also started out like a whirlwind 
And one of his uh, initial events has been establishment of a white coat ceremony for the new PhD students who came in, which was very well received and I hope mark marked uh, their engagement with the School of Medicine. Uh, in the education line, Linda Montgomery took over as Dean of the Emily Blackwell Elizabeth McKinley Society, and Susan Padrino became the Assistant Dean for Clinical Sciences. Both of them have had wonderful starts. At the Cleveland Clinic Foundation, it was a good year for I. Dan Martin became the uh, director uh, and uh, the equivalent of our chair of ophthalmology. He's the director of the eye in the Cole Eye Institute. Um, at Metro Health, they got a whole new CEO, Akram Boutras, who is a physician, who became the chief executive officer at, uh, at Metro. Uh, at Metro, too, they have a new chair of pediatrics, uh, Naza Abu, Abu Ghali, and Jack Wilbur became the chair of orthopedics. He's also the Hans uh, uh, Wies professor. I can't possibly describe to you in a few minutes the achievements of our faculty in research this year. We have had a bumper crop of publications in single word name journals, and we've had a bumper <laughs> and we've had a bumper crop of wonderful achievements. But I just wanted to call out a, a few of them so that you have an idea of the wonderful range that uh, that our faculty have. Paul Tesar is an assistant professor in genetics, and he is an expert in converting cells from one type to another. So he can take cells from your skin, de-differentiate in the lab into pluripotent stem cells, and then re-differentiate them into just about anything he'd like. And uh, one of the things that he, uh, that he likes is, um, is converting them into uh, the cell types that uh, uh, are involved in the disease multiple sclerosis. So this is a huge uh, advantage to investigators who work on that. Michael Weiss has published the definitive paper on how insulin interacts with its receptor, which opens a whole raft of new opportunities. John Stamler has published on how uh, nitrosylation of hemoglobin can regulate the, uh, the opportunity to store blood for longer periods of time. And Mark Griswold has developed a, a huge uh, uh, advance in the analysis of uh, magnetic resonance imaging data that will surely allow us a huge uh, leap forward in, uh, in being able to detect uh, uh, disease on the MRI. I wanted to call out a couple of uh, people, not because the, everybody else hasn't gotten grants, but these two people got grants from places that the medical school has never had grants from before. So Christian Baker got a National Science Foundation Career Award. That's the first one the medical school's ever had. And uh, Kurt Stange has gotten not one, but two awards from the Patient-Centered Outcomes Research Institute, the PCORI grants. And I would commend that to your attention because it is the only part of the federal grants budget that's actually going up. <laughs> <laughs> we had uh, prizes for educators this year. Uh, Amy Wilson Delfos won one of the very coveted uh, AOA Distinguished Teacher Awards, the Glazer Awards from the AAMC. And Masahiro Morikawa got the Exemplary Teaching Award from the American Academy of Family Physicians. Uh, Rick Walsh got the Williams Award from the Association of Professors of Medicine, and Art McCullough got the Distinguished Clinician Educator and Mentor Award from the American Association of Study of Liver Disease. Finally, we're getting our educational prowess recognized. We were good this year for healthcare heroes. I didn't get all of them, but we got some. And uh, the people that you see here, uh, plus uh, Philip Tomsick, who is not pictured because we could not find a picture of this guy. Uh, but he's a hero nonetheless. Uh, are, we're just thrilled that all of these individuals contribute so, uh, so markedly to uh, our community uh, health care. Now, CWRU this year inaugurated uh, awards for distinguished faculty uh, researchers. And the medical school was awarded two of these individuals, uh, Sandy Markowitz and Chris Palczewski. 
And Chris had a good year this year, also earned the prestigious Friedenwald Award from the Association for Research in Vision and Ophthalmology. Now, Case Western Reserve has had, had, has had excellence in vision research for quite a while, but we have not had a Friedenwald Award since 1961. So congrats to, uh, to Chris. Now, continuing his string, I believe you've seen this guy before, uh, Jim Anderson was actually elected to the National Academy of Engineering. He was already a member of the Institute of Medicine. So well, this is his second round in the National Academy. And he also received a gold medal from the Biomaterials Society for his work in, uh, in biomaterials. This past year's Floristone Mather Woman of Achievement was Jill Barnholt Sloan, who acquitted herself very well for the medical school in this, uh, in this uh, category. And we had one more distinguished university professor awarded this year. The university only awarded three of them, and one of them was our own Stan Gerson. Um, Stan also had a pretty good year this year because the Case Comprehensive Cancer Center was renewed with an outstanding score and that places us among the very finest in, uh, uh, in, the, in the country, and it was awarded at $23.4 million. And, so he's warmed the heart of the Cancer Center. He has the warmth of the community, and he's warmed the heart of the Finance Department as well. <laughs> We're good. So there are some things that are not so hot. Um, not only do we, you know, can tell that these slides were prepared a little bit before Monday, because it should have had another thing on the list with the shutdown of the, of the government being listed there. And we have had to adapt. Uh, to the threats of the sequester. We're pretty sure now that it's going forward for the second year, which is going to send 2014 into what is predicted to be the nadir of, uh, of federal funding for research. Um, we lost, but we didn't lose as much as, uh, as might be the case, and our overall revenue stayed strong. We did lose significant NIH funding, which is important because the NIH carries full indirect costs, and those indirect costs help us pay for the space and the administration. They help us run the school. We did make up some of those NIH dollars for the research labs in other ways that, I, that I'm going to show you. But we do need the federal dollar because we need those indirect costs because you all have gotten used to having lights when you turn the switch. And uh, we really... Uh, we really need to put pressure on our congressmen and on our government to get their act together and recognize the importance of biomedical research as a real driver of uh, economic prosperity in the United States. So, commercial over. Now, we have uh, worked hard, you have worked hard, to uh, add revenue by other means. We have done very well this year from tuition revenue. It's up about 17%. And this is mostly in the categories of undergraduate and uh, graduate student master's programs that have really driven this revenue stream. And uh, the master's of science in anesthesiology, the master's in physiology uh, have really led the way there. But there's been a big contribution from all of you who teach undergraduates and from all of you who have worked hard to increase your master's uh, programs, and we're very grateful for that. This was quite a year for philanthropy. I have to congratulate Carol Moss and her team, and I have to congratulate all of you who worked with uh, Carol and her team to bring this record in. Uh, the 51.5 million in new commitments was a record for the School of Medicine. And uh, you can imagine that I've already asked her what she's going to do this year. Um, the number of donors went up by 50% from about 2,200 to 3,500. And that's a very important statistic because it means we got more friends and more friends that are willing to show it by writing a check. And our annual fund hit, uh, hit uh, a new high water mark at 2.3 million. Those of us the, uh, who, were, who participated in Alumni Weekend saw the head of, alum, of the alumni reunion, Vince Gaudiani, hand me a check for $7,002,000. 
And that, there's a little story behind that. On the Thursday before that check was presented, uh, we were $22,000 short of $7 million. Vince thought that was a crime. So Vince stepped up himself and circulated among his classmates and friends and put us over the $7 million mark. So we have people who are not only willing to open their checks but books, but are willing to hustle. And uh, I'm, really, uh, I'm really thrilled that that has occurred. We have done reasonably well in diversifying our, uh, our support. Indeed, compared to, I think, fiscal uh, 11, fiscal 13 had a, a more than doubling of our foundation support. That is a remarkable achievement. Some of those foundations are new for us. The Medtronic Foundation, we have not accessed that foundation before. Um, we have not had a, um, a Hartwell Foundation grant in many years. So people are looking hard and going out after things that they haven't gone out after before. And if you think you know a foundation or if you think you can uh, can access some funds there. Susan McHale in, uh, in the development office is the person, is the lady on the spot, and she may be able to help you. The non-NIH federal uh, funding sources have also increased. Uh, Stan Gerson remarked to me that in all of the years that he's been getting grants, he's never had one from NASA, but he does now. And uh, this, these are real opportunities that we have to look at. And I already flagged PCORI for you. You've got to pay attention to, the, to uh, going where the money is. Now, the other uh, program that's had a fair amount of success in the last year has been our commercialization uh, activities headed by uh, Mark Chance and the Council to Advance Human Health. You remember I told you about this in a reasonable amount of detail uh, last year. It only started in December of 2011. We assembled uh, about 20 of our alums and friends who are venture capitalists and leaders in industry, the head of the Merck Foundation, the head of Lilly Diabetes, two venture fund guys, um, you know, patent attorneys, uh, to evaluate our programs for their commercial potential. Now, if they, don't, they say your program doesn't have a whole lot of commercial potential, that doesn't mean it isn't great science. It doesn't mean that your NIH funding is in any way jeopardized. It just means that the commercial uh, landscape isn't, for, uh, isn't fortuitous. But they have recommended investment in some programs. Our high throughput screening program has, uh, has rocked and rolled. Uh, and these uh, our chief translational officers, uh, Bill Hart and uh, Blair Jeho have made connections for industry for some people who've been kind of completely outside of the Council to Advance Human Health. The long and short of it is there's been over $4 million in new investments into the companies that are spin outs from these folks or in grants from other agencies that have come to the university to advance these technologies toward commercialization. And more important, that's going to take our technologies and bring them forward to help patients. And we're not, we're not looking for the thing that is, uh, is only involved in the billion dollar blockbuster. We're looking for the drugs that are gonna help smaller groups of patients and, and uh, are just gonna make life easier. So I'm pretty excited about the opportunities here. here. Keep an eye on it. Our uh, chief translational officers are now consulting with 50 faculty members around the school. So on the research side, uh, we have worked very hard to see that collaboration is the order of the day. There is going to be no excuse in the future. Our, neither our funders nor our donors are going to tolerate isolationism and silos. They are going to expect us to work together on, uh, on research activities. Now, one of the great examples of uh, furthering collaboration has, was the Research Corps retreat that was held, uh, spearheaded by our Vice Dean for Research, Mark Chance, but sponsored by the CTSC, the Cancer Center, and the Center for AIDS Research. About 100 faculty and staff came together at that, uh, at that research. There is already a draft of a white paper, and uh, we are looking forward to improving the quality of our cores, making them attractive for use for members of the faculty, 
consolidating duplicative services, and making sure that the services that we do offer are cutting edge so our faculty can do the cutting edge research and put it into their grants. I'd like to call out one other wonderful instance of collaboration, and that is the uh, initiation of the Institute for Computational Biology. Uh, we have recruited a spectacular leader for this uh, program, Jonathan Haynes, who is going to arrive on November 1st. But I think one of the important things about this is that it is a collaborative effort among Case Western Reserve University, University Hospitals Case Medical Center, and the Cleveland Clinic Foundation, each of which has seven-figure levels of skin in this particular game. But this kind of a collaboration is going to create really big data. Metro was unable to contribute the money to the recruitment there, but they're going to contribute their data. We are going to have more than 90% of the covered lives in the Cleveland area, in the greater Cleveland area, available for study. This is going to be an extraordinary resource. <laughs> extraordinary. I only pulled out a few to give you some examples of collaboration uh, that have occurred, that's occurred in the, uh, in the medical school and some of the great results. You may have heard about Brian Grimberg, who's collaborated with Disease Diagnostic Group to bring forward a cheap and effective and quick test for malaria. You put a drop of blood out, you measure the magnetism of it, and you can tell whether there's malaria or not. This is doable on, in the field. This is just a remarkable advance in the global health area and I think could really help in the, in the epidemiology and the diagnostics for this disease. And it only comes about through collaboration between the academic sector and the commercial sector. Suda Inungyar is a member of the, eight, uh, of the 18 different research groups and indeed the, uh, one of the leaders of a study that uh, determined, uh, I think, five new genes, seven new regions of the human genome associated with uh, macular degeneration. And we've seen in other diseases that these kinds of discoveries eventually cascade to understanding the disease better and toward developing new, uh, new therapeutics. Uh, Mukesh Jain, his, uh, his team found that KLF15 is he the guy who has the vanity plate that says Kruppel? Um, can block the blood vessel inflammation that leads to heart attacks, strokes, and other life-threatening illnesses. He worked with the Cardiovascular Research Institute, the School of Medicine, the Harrington Heart and Vascular Institute, researchers at Harvard Medical School, Duke, and Brigham and Women's Hospital. This is a collaboration that's going to influence how we treat a major killer in the United States. And uh, John Wang, out of, out of the Case Comprehensive Cancer Center, has collaborated around the world with the Third Medi Military Medical University, University of Akron, Jing Jingsu University, and the Cleveland Clinic to identify uh, genes that are common to many uh, serious uh, cancer, many different kinds of serious cancers. So collaboration is absolutely critical. We have tried to support our faculty in these difficult times. Uh, we have made an investment in bridge funding that now since inception, and actually inception in Bob Miller's time and carried on by Mark Chance, is over uh, $6 million. Since then, 70 new grants have been uh, secured and 31 are pending. The total amount returned is over $70 million. We got an email just this week from Richard Zygmunt whose grant was funded in the last days of the, uh, before the government shut down, thank you, um, who said, you, this funding really allowed me to keep my lab together so that I can hit the ground running with my new R01, and that's actually the name of the game here. There have been more than 300 publications in this uh, space. And the pilot funding program for the Clinical and Translational Science Collaborative is now up near $4 million of investment, with a total impact near $39 million. And B Brian Grimberg, who I talked to you be about before, got his start with the Coulter and uh, uh, CTSC funding. So that's, you know, great oaks from small acorns grow. 
Um, in addition, on the, on the malaria front here, uh, we gave a, a, one of our uh, annual pilot grants uh, to Pete Zimmerman and David Sari at the Cleveland Clinic, Pete at the Center for Global Health. This has grown into a study of malaria in Madagascar, and both of them, both David and Pete, have their own individual R-series grants, each with the other on board as a collaborator. Well, that was a pretty good twofer out of that. We're pleased. Now, we've been thinking hard about faculty development, and I think one of the best things uh, that we've done is uh, coordinated all those activities in the Office of uh, Faculty Development and Diversity with a Vice Dean, Santa Lou. She's been busy. Um, she's de delivered a number of workshops in, uh, in uh, faculty development and uh, with more to come. It is, mentorship has now become part of the expectation, the explicit expectation for chairs. It is part of their, uh, their annual report. Every individual department is developing a mentoring program now. Faculty coaching is available for individuals, and you should see Sana about that. And the departments can use the Office of Faculty Development and Diversity to, fan to plan and implement their programs. Now, one of the really neat programs that's come out of the mentoring uh, effort is the FLEX program, which was initiated by the women faculty of the School of Medicine and has been carried forward largely by the efforts of Sumita Khatri in pulmonary at the Cleveland Clinic. See, I like pulmonologists. This is good. Um, <laughs> they started out with eight students and the eight faculty who were uh, who engaged in this program. And those faculty were based at the VA, Metro, University Hospitals, the Cleveland Clinic, and in the School of Medicine. The whole spectrum was represented, and that happened solely by objective evaluation of the application. So we were pretty uh, impressed with that. She, Im she managed to impress a, a one of our donors so much that they've been able to expand the program to 16 uh, women this year. And it's a pretty nice uh, idea uh, to, uh, to uh, improve the status and uh, uh, opportunities for women faculty. Now, another pro project that uh, Sana has spearheaded ha is uh, working with the basic science chairs and center directors to realize their ambitions to participate more in the uh, medical school curriculum and to, uh, to help their faculty develop in, uh, in other ways in research. So we held a, re uh, Sana organized a retreat which included uh, Ann Bonham from the AAMC and several other faculty from other institutions. And there were many excellent representations for that. I want to highlight two of them. Every uh, basic science department or center is now <coughs> providing one person uh, to form a committee uh, to uh, enhance the role of basic science departments in medical education. And they are determined to learn more about how basic sciences come through in the small group uh, learning environment. And you know, I think they're learning a great deal about that. And second, they have formed a committee to develop a proposal supporting internal sabbaticals in the medical school. These are both terrific ideas, and I appreciate the time they've spent working on that. And due to the success of the first meeting, there'll be a follow-up meeting in December of this year. One of the foci of the medical school has been our activities in the community. And I cannot talk about everything that's going on now. It's really a broad panoply of activities. But I wanted to hi highlight something at the local, something at the regional, and something at the global level. So the North Star Collaborative Anatomy Camp uh, partners with the North Star Collaborative, Gelfand STEM Center, and Laurel School. This program offered mentorship to 40 seventh grade girls focusing on intellectual, social, emotional, and physical wellness. And congratulations to Sue Wishbaratz for uh, spearheading that. We have wonderful programs in high schools that are operating under the umbrella of the Weatherhead Institute and with John Hay and with uh, MC Squared STEM high schools. But we've all had the sense that we need to start earlier. And starting at the seventh grade is, uh, is, a, great, uh, is a great start. 
I'd like to congratulate Joe Peter on his success in the CWRU Regional Extension Center, which was charged with delivering the electronic health record to primary care practices in a five county area. Now the behemoths, the Cleveland Clinic and UH and Metro deliver the electronic health record themselves. These guys in private practice really need help in meeting the, uh, the government's expectations of electronicization and communication. And Joe used all of his slots, 100% of his slots, and our regional extension center is the leading one in Ohio for achieving meaningful use of electronic health records by the government's criteria. So a lot of these folks in the community are getting the governmental carrots, financial carrots, and will avoid the government's stick because we put the time and effort into that. So we're really thrilled with that. And on the global level, Jim Kazura published in the New England Journal of Medicine the importance of a very simple intervention in controlling almost completely filariasis, insecticide-treated bed nets. And he has been careful to document to great, uh, the, all of the, uh, the issues that one sees in these, uh, in these uh, developments. And we're just thrilled that uh, this seems to be working in a section of Papua New Guinea and could be extended around the world. One other thing I'd like to mention is that uh, we are working very hard with the high schools in the area, as I told you, the John Hay, the MC Squared STEM, and now extended to Akron. And our work in this area caught the eye of Cisco Systems, which has now donated in kind $1.6 million worth of equipment to connect us to these high schools. Now, we sort of walk across Martin Luther King. You take your life in your hands, but you can do it. Um, and, and our students do go over there. Uh, Bob Haney has led that, and our students have led small groups there. But now John Hay, there's going to be another John Hay on the west side. And how are we going to manage that? The John Hay program is a collaboration with the Cleveland Clinic, University Hospitals, and, and the medical school. But I got to say that our students are, are putting the sweat equity in. At, uh, at that program. But on the west side, it's not quite so convenient. So this tele, telemedicine uh, and telecommunications is going to allow us to connect with the students all over the city and expand the, our, the ability of our professors here to interact with the high school uh, students. It's, uh, it's really a very exciting program. Cisco's very excited about it. And uh, it's collaborative, cross-curricular, and interdisciplinary all things that we sort of like around here. Well, education is one of our shining stars. Our, our medical student uh, class continues to be extraordinary. Lena Maida and Chris Essman, their team, do a wonderful job of recruiting. Our, our grade points and, uh, and MCATs are, are very, very high. The diversity of our students is, is quite good. They all have something interesting about them when they come in, too. So that when we put them in a group of eight students and they work on their small group activities, they have different perspectives coming together. And we're just very proud of who these kids are and who they're going to be. Our newest colleagues did a great job of matching. This was a spectacular year for the match again. You know, we like to say we get them in good and we make them better. They do really well on the USMLE. They do really well on step two. And they match to the best places in the country. So we really have a fantastic education program that the opportunity of our new building is going to give us a chance to make it the very, very top in the world. And that's where we're going. That's where we're going, guys. We're going to the top in medical education. The future starts here. This was our, uh, our uh, uh, white coat ceremony uh, on, in July of this year. And this is the white coat ceremony for the graduate students. They got long white coats. I don't know. Are we going to create coat envy in our, in our medical students? I, I just don't know. But it was, a wonderful, uh, it was a wonderful time, a wonderful ceremony. And we want everybody to feel like they're a part of a greater whole. Now, you know that the strategic plan is being worked on. And uh, actually, I understand that there's a draft of a combined plan, which I have not seen. It's a secret. 
But uh, the four groups uh, that we put together are re have really been rocking and rolling. I don't have time to discuss this. There'll be a separate town hall on this one. But I did want to bring out a few points from each of the groups. Uh, the people plan uh, theme was putting our people first. And uh, they have uh, included diversity, mentorship, transparency, and uh, prioritization of resources to reward uh, deserving and creative individuals pretty much at the top of their list. The research plan offers opportunity for growth. Um, they saw, thank you very much, the CTSC is an opportunity for, uh, for expansion. Uh, they saw the, the newly improved undergraduate recruiting in numbers as an opportunity to recruit spectacular undergraduates into our laboratories. They recommended investment in key disciplines, focused and, uh, and substantial. In education, they wanted to take the very best approaches to engage with our community partners, to expand inter-school collaboration, to utilize the technologies and communications that are burgeoning these days, and particularly to, uh, to help uh, students embrace uh, translational medicine. And the community program, working with our neighbors, uh, involvement with policy was a high priority. We probably haven't done enough of that, and that should be a, a focus in the next five years. Strengthen our collaborations across the area and the region, capitalizing on the connections between public health and medicine. We have developed a very strong relationship with the public health agencies in town. We now have a faculty member embedded there about half time. And, uh, we have several of the, the public health um, uh, employees and workers coming to our MPH program to uh, expand their educational horizons, and we're working together on a number of projects. We're simply going to have to use technology to improve our communications here. Our, our plan is aligned with the university's strategic plan. Thank goodness it's going to be presented to the board this weekend, and uh, we fit right in. So our future is now. We have new med-ed building plans, new plans for core facilities, many new discoveries, some of them coming out as cures. We have new education plans. We're developing new funding sources. We have new foundations for support. This has been an incredible year. I personally have a new husband and a new <laughs> granddaughter. <laughs> The world is new, and we can reach for the stars. Come along with us. Thanks.